Okay, so in this video, we're going to set up the uh, redirection. So in the last video, we you saw that we actually set up the redirect to the Discord login page, right? The, the OAuth2 login page. But when we clicked on authorize, it didn't do anything. Well, it tried to redirect us to this URL, but you can see that Django says page not found. So we need to actually implement that route. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply do this over here. So def discord login redirect. So this is another function and it's also going to take in the request object. Okay. And essentially this route over here is going to have the request object that has the actual code in the query parameter. And I'll show you guys that in just a sec. Okay. So let's just simply return a simple JSON. Let's just do return JSON response. We'll do message redirected. So basically when we reach this uh, function, that means we have successfully authenticated ourselves. So we're going to go back to URLs and let's set up one more route path OAuth2 login redirect views in the discord login that I call it login redirect. Okay, there we go. Name. There we go. Okay, very, very simple stuff. Again, not too, uh, not too crazy so far, right? It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, let's not tests, uh, views. Okay, let's just go ahead and visit the route right now. And let's just make sure that that actually works. Okay, so you can see this is redirected. So let's go ahead and try and log in again. So we're going to visit slash OAuth2 slash login. We're going to click on authorize and you're going to see redirected. Okay, good. So now this is the part where we're going to need to do a couple of things. We need to actually take the code that is inside the query parameter. Okay, you can see in the address bar, we have this query parameter code. We basically need to take this code and exchange that code with the access token, or I'm sorry, we need to take that code and exchange the code to get an access token, a refresh token as well. Okay, because we cannot get the user data without the actual access token. So in order to actually make that exchange, we need to install a library called requests, or you can install any request library. I'm just going to install requests. So pip and install requests. Okay, just uh, let that install. All right, so it should, uh, okay, there we go. Perfect. It's uh, listed in our pip file. Okay, so let's run the application now. So python manage.py run server okay so what we're going to do is we're going to import a uh, request so import requests right over there okay and what we want to do is we basically want to make a post request okay so right over here the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and get the code from well not cost code Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the code. So if you want to get the query parameter, you can actually reference that from the request object by doing request dot get because this is a get request and then dot get an actual method and then code. So this is going to get us the actual code. So I'm going to print that out just to show you guys the logs just a sec. And then we're going to define a function down over here because I don't want to put everything in one function. So I'm going to create this function called exchange code and it's going to take in the actual code itself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, define a couple of variables over here. So the first thing we need is a payload because we're going to make a post request to the Discord endpoint. Okay, so the post request is going to take in a request body. So the request body needs a couple properties. We have the client ID. So I'm going to just take my client ID right over here. I'm honestly just going to hard code it just to show you guys. I'm not going to bother like putting it in environment variable. I'm just going to hard code it. But like I said, do not hard code this. You know, I'm just showing you guys a most basic example. What you should do is either set these things, set these uh, uh, values inside an environment variable or, you know, put them in some kind of config uh, file. Okay. But especially for the client secret, especially for the client secret, we need to put that somewhere safe. But I'm going to go ahead and get the client secret right now. Let me actually just regenerate it. Let's copy it. Okay. We're going to need the grant type, so grant underscore type, so authorization underscore code. 
we need the actual code itself. So that's going to be code. So remember, this is coming from the parameter. Okay, we're going to pass that in when we actually call it. And then well, now we need the redirect URI. So that's just going to be HTTP localhost port 8000 OAuth2 login redirect. Okay, now, like I said, in the production application, you would pass in your actual domain name. Okay, now the scope, we're just going to put identify. If you wanted the email or the guild, you would put email and guild, you would put in the space. Okay, but I'm just going to do identify for now. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and create one more dictionary. Okay, we're going to call it headers. And we need to specify the content type because when you make the post request to this endpoint, it actually does not take uh, JSON, it takes in a URL encoded form. Okay, so we need to URL encode this. Well, actually, the library will do it for us, but we need to set the content type so we can tell the end, the endpoint what kind of data to expect. And the, by endpoint, I mean the actual Discord endpoint. Okay, so now we're going to do response equals requests.post. So we're going to call request.post. We're going to hit the endpoint, the Discord uh, token endpoint. Okay, so that's going to be this URL over here. That's discord.com slash API slash OAuth2 slash token. Okay. And whatever response is returned, we're going to get that. So we're going to assign that to the response variable. And we want to pass in data as well as headers, just like this. Okay. And yes, yeah, so this should succeed. If it doesn't, that means the code was incorrect. There was something wrong with the code. But let's go ahead and get the response.json. Okay, well, actually, I'll, uh, I'll like print response just so you guys can see. Okay, so let me go ahead and call exchange code. We're gonna pass in the code. And let's just see what this does so far. Cause right now I don't wanna keep going. I wanna show you guys what it actually does. So let's call authorized. So it says redirected, but you can see right over here, you see it says response 400. So it seems like there is an issue, but you can see right over here that we actually do have the code itself. The code that is used to exchange uh, for the access token as well as the refresh token, but we're getting a 400 error. I'm not entirely sure why. Let me actually print credentials. Maybe uh, that might tell us the error. So let's try this again. Let's authorize. So it's saying invalid request and it's saying invalid redirect your eyes. So we have a, we have an error. So it seems like uh, right over here, localhost 40,000. Uh, let's see. What is the issue? OAuth2 log. Oh, it's OAuth2. Okay. There we go. All right, there we go. That should fix it. All right, so let's try this again. Authorize. Okay, now it's a 200. Okay, so when you actually get the response, if you call response.json, that will give you the actual, I think, dictionary. And it basically will give you the access token, the refresh token, and a bunch of other uh, data. You can actually look at the Discord documentation under the OAuth2 page, and it'll tell you uh, what it actually returns. So if I actually go to, uh, let me go to documentation, show you guys real quick. Let's go to OAuth2. So if I actually scroll on here, this is basically what we're doing. Okay, it looks very identical. But if you look over here, this is the response. Okay, so access token, the token type expires in, refresh token, and the scope. Okay, very, very simple. But what we want to do next is we want to get the access token because we want to use the access token to get the actual user data. So, or any endpoint that you want to uh, hit to get data. So if you want to get guilds, if you want to get the user object, you would need to use the access token. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So we're going to reassign the value. Uh, we're going to reassign a value to response. And I'm going to reference requests, but this time I'm going to make a get request. And I'm going to call HTTPS discord.com slash API slash V6. That's the base URL. And we're going to hit the users at me endpoint. So this is going to get the actual data for the user. And we want to pass in headers again, but this time, instead of content type, we're going to pass in the authorization property. And for uh, the value, we're going to pass in the bearer token. So I'm going to use some string formatting. So bearer percent S and then percent access token. So this is going to basically format the string so that in, in the end, it's going to basically look like bearer access token, the actual value of the access token. And that's the only uh, property we need to set. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, print the response. Let's go ahead and do response.json. Let's print user and let's return that. Okay. And let me actually go ahead and assign this value 
or extend the value of exchange code to user. And let's go ahead and instead of just saying message, let's say user, let's map that to the user uh, value. And let's try this again. So let's go back and let's authorize. And there you can see that we now have our data. Okay, so we have successfully implemented the redirection. Okay, so now when we are successfully redirected, it's going to show our uh, user details on this page when we redirect. Okay, so hopefully all of this made sense. I know it was a little bit, it might be a little bit weird if this is your first time doing it, but let's just review this real quick. So all we did so far was we created a new function called discord login redirect. Okay, we registered that function in the urls.py like we have to do with every single view. Okay, very simple stuff. In the last video, remember when we clicked on authorize, it tried to redirect us to the page, but it didn't work. We got a 404 not found, but now we don't because we actually implemented the route and we registered it. So what we're doing is we're getting the query parameter. Okay, in the route, you see this code, that's a query parameter. Okay, that is what we're going to use to exchange the code with the access token as well as the refresh token. So we are calling exchange code. This is a function, okay, that we created. We're calling this function. And I, like I said earlier, I'm hard coding all of the values inside the dictionary, but you should store these in an environment variable, okay, to make it a little bit more dynamic or you want to keep it private, obviously. And then we have our data payload, we have our headers, okay? And we make a post request to the token endpoint. This is where you get the access token as well as the refresh token, okay? You need the access token in order to make requests on behalf of the user. So you cannot get the user uh, data if you don't have the actual access token, okay? And uh, the refresh token is used to actually refresh the access token. So let's say, for example, we know for a fact that the access token is going to expire after a certain amount of... Uh, I think hours or days. I think it's actually one week. I'm not sure. But I know the refresh token lasts a little bit longer. So if the access token is expired, you have to use the refresh token to refresh the access token to get a new one. Okay. And then once we call that endpoint, we're going to get the access and refresh token. And we use that to get the actual user data. And then we print it out. We get the response. Okay. And we get the user data. And then we uh, returned it. And then we showed it to uh, the endpoint over there. Okay, so hopefully all this made sense. Now, the one problem with this right now is that we aren't actually saving this user to our database. And it's also not persistent. We want to make sure our requests are persistent. And what I mean by that is we aren't actually logged in. We've only authenticated ourselves, but it's actually not saved to the session. So if we were to make additional requests, we wouldn't be able to know if the user is logged in or not. So in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to get started with handling that. We're going to basically build our own authentication uh, layer in our application.